All right, six, four, six, six, uh, two more examples that I thought you might uh, want to check out. Uh, so same examples as the last example that uh, I ended the first video with. So you should be able to state the amplitude period and phase shift without looking at the graph. But remember, it needs to be put in the um, form where the coefficient of x is factored out. All right, so let's do that. Let's factor that guy out. All right, so he's a little weird because he's got a pi in him. So I want to ask myself, so I can make a little thought bubble and say, what would I have to multiply uh, 2 pi by, what am I multiplying by, so I get 4 back, right? I want him to distribute back through the parentheses, and then I'm looking for what would he need to be multiplied by, whoops, to get 4 back. It's easy doing just taking it off of x, right? This is definitely going to give me back 2 pi x, but what do I multiply and buy back there to get 4 back? So you can go off to the side and do a little thinking, or maybe you can just see it in your head. And it looks like it would just be 2 over pi. So that's what I'm going to put in the back of the parentheses. 2 over pi. So multiplying, whoops, 2 over pi. So multiplying 2 pi by 2 over pi, that'll give us back this 4. All right, so that's good. So now I can tell you what the amplitude is, the period, and the phase shift. So the amplitude comes from the coefficient of the function. That's 2. The period, let's use just 4. The period is coming from taking the initial or the original period of sine. Original period of sine is 2 pi. And so I'm going to take that period and I'm going to divide it by, or multiply it by the reciprocal of x. So that's 2 pi, 1 over 2 pi. So that's just going to be a 1. The phase shift, this is why we factored it out. The phase shift is this guy right here. So negative, uh, or you can say 2 over pi to the left. Right, it is negative 2 pi. The negatives go to the left. So if the minus h turns into plus, it's because a negative h value is plugged in. All right, so we have our amplitude, we have our period, and we have our phase shift. So now we're ready to graph. So when we graph, for me and for all of our classes here, we need to make a table of values so we can come up with the key points. So our table of value we start with is the parent function for sine. So just use those quadrantal angles. You know, I'm going to give myself a little bit of space because this guy gets a little messy because of that negative 2 over pi. All right, and I think I'm even going to move it over. So move this guy over. And now I'm ready. So the coefficient of the function is telling us to multiply the y values. The coefficient of x is saying multiply The x is by its reciprocal. So all of these guys are going to get multiplied by 2 pi's reciprocal. Okay. So now um, let's do this. This guy is just going to be 0. This is going to knock him out, so that's going to be 1 over 4. That knocks him out, so that's just going to be 1 over 2. That knocks him out, it's going to be 3 over 4. And that knocks out all together, and there's your period again, so that's 1. 
All right, so next up is the phase shift. So add negative 2 over pi to these guys. So I'm adding negative 2 over pi to all the x values. Adding negative 2 over pi to all the x values. And so here it is. It's negative 2 over pi. This is going to be 1 fourth minus 2 over pi. This is going to be 1 half minus 2 over pi. 3 fourths minus 2 over pi. 1 minus 2 over pi. So these are increments of a quarter, they're quarter increments. And you can see it right here, zero, a quarter, a half, three fourths, one. And those increments of a quarter are gonna shift over two over pi. So when I make my x-axis, when I graph it, I need to be aware so I don't get a lopsided um, x-axis that my curve is gonna cruise along. Lopsided meaning we you don't want to include your y-axis as part of your increments or your intervals um, That you're graphing along so last piece Is adding 4 to the y's right add 4 to the y's That's the k value And those are the ordered pairs Okay here are the ordered pairs. These are our key points that we want to show. All right, so I, I don't really enjoy these, to be honest, because they're just so chaotic. But it is good stuff for keeping track of terms as we go higher in mathematics, terms aren't always all friendly and like terms. So we have to deal with it. It's just not a joy for a lot of people. Okay, just pretty chaotic. So those are the points I'm going to plot, and that's just going to be one cycle, one period of sine. I need to copy this ugliness to complete two periods. So I, I did this earlier, and I gave myself... Um, the table uh, down here on the next page because I want to show you guys how I need to position my y-axis. I don't have them in here right now. I'm going to plot them in there after I get my x-axis labeled. And what else I did here was I put a decimal value in. I don't think that was even necessary because you can see Maybe I sh no, I'm having second thoughts. Maybe I should just do this. Let's copy this. Don't need to copy. And let's get rid of these guys. All right, yeah, I like this better. So here is uh, the ordered pairs from above. And there, it's counting by quarters. You can see it. Um, uh, a quarter, a quarter to a half, a half to three quarters. You can say this was zero to a quarter, right? Zero to a quarter, a quarter to a half, a half to three quarters, and three quarters to one. So my x-axis is going by quarters, and to each quarter, I'm adding negative two over pi. So I have it marked already. Now I'm thinking maybe I did too much. And those decimal values weren't that bad. Maybe now I want to get them back. These are all negative values. If you type this in, I'm going to do something. I'm going to copy this and then I'm going to bring everybody back. Those decimal values so you don't have to watch me. Yeah. Okay, there's those decimal values. I'll let you put this back. Uh, okay. Mm. I'm really struggling. Let's just delete them. 
Okay, so you have those ordered pairs. Um, I'm struggling because every time I go to copy it, it's taking the whole picture. I'm just going to do it again up here. I'm sorry. I just want you to understand how to get your x-axis marked correctly. All right. All right, that's better. Okay, so here are here are the uh, exact order pairs. These are the exact order pairs. And these are decimal values. The reason I wanted to do the decimal values is so you could see that the first three points there at the top are still negative. So when I put my x, my y axis in, I want to have it so that three of those marks are to the left of the y axis and that the y axis is closer to the first mark on the x axis. Because why? Because this 1.137 is closer to the y-axis than the 0.387, the negative 0.387. Um, I just said that wrong. <laughs> Sorry. This 113, this 0.113 is closer to the y-axis. I'm it's getting late again. Story of my life. Uh, so let's let's mark it so you can see. So this is going to be negative two over pi. I'm so far over. Can't even miss them. That's making it look small. And then this guy, the next one over is going to be one fourth minus two over pi. The next one is going to be one half minus two over pi. The next one is going to be three fourths. minus 2 over pi, and then the next one, so equal increments, and this one can be over a little bit more, 1 minus 2 over pi, okay, so if I take that y-axis out again, those should all look like they're equidistant from each other. All these increments should look about the same. I don't want to put parentheses around here. But this, this mark is this value. This mark is this value. And I have the decimal values for them listed off to the side there, highlighted in blue. Okay? So putting my y-axis back in, he goes closer to the 3 pi over 4. Sorry, the 3 fourths minus 2 pi. This is chaotic because 3 fourths minus 2 pi is 0.113. And 0.113 is closer to the y axis than negative 0.137. All right. So there is my, y, uh, my x axis labeled with my x values that popped up in my transformations of the parent table. The y-axis uh, has six markings. I think I gotta drop him down. I think I lost a marking. So dropping him down, and I think I lost a marking. So one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, let's plot away. So negative two pi comma four. 2 pi, 2 over pi, negative 2 over pi. I'm going to keep saying that because this 2 over pi is not a common value. So sorry, I keep saying 2 pi. Then I have 1 fourth minus 2 pi is up at 6. Then 1 half minus 2 pi is up at 4. So our midline is shifted up to 4. Then I have 3 over 4 minus 2 pi is up at 2. 
Then I have 1 minus 2 over pi is up at 4. So here is one period. And I'm going to leave it to you to see if you can figure out another period. It's just moving increments of a quarter. But to make this video not so long, I'll leave it to you to, to think about it, and then we can discuss it in class. Okay? All right. The last example uh, on this assignment was part of um, what I have already assigned, but it had one of these ugly guys in there. And it's only ugly when your coefficient of x has a pi in it. That's what makes it ugly and messy. So this next one says, write an equation of the sine function with a given characteristics where the amplitude is greater than zero. So we have a positive amplitude. So we want to use um, this guy, y equals a sine um, something x minus h plus k. So the period is, uh, the amplitude is 3. Let's do this. The amplitude is 3. Uh, the phase shift is going to go pi over 6 to the left. And my amplitude, I'm sorry, my period is going to come from this guy. He's, what I, he's really all I have to figure out. So if the period is found by using 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b, then all we need to do is substitute in the fact that the period is 2 pi for this guy and solve for b. And we'll just call it b instead of the absolute value because it's going to be positive if I just remove it. So solving this guy, this that's really the only catch to this question is finding the period. So so multiply both sides by b, divide both sides by four pi. And we get b is equal to a half. All right. Um, so plug in a half, or that's the coefficient. I shouldn't have called it b. That is just the coefficient, right? That is just the coefficient. So the coefficient is a half. I'm tempted to go back here and just say divided by, well, I guess it's okay. Okay, he's fine. Uh, we could talk more about this coefficient because all of a sudden I'm thinking some of us are going to say he's 2. But you're going to multiply the x values by 2, which is going to stretch the period. So we'll talk about that. we got to contemplate that a little bit. Um, so my a value, I don't know why I'm just erasing this, but I am. My a value is 3, and the h value is minus or negative pi over 6. And then there is no k value. k is 0. It didn't shift up. So we can clean this up, and it's going to look like this. And that's it. Okay, so you can uh, practice some of those on that page. And that's all I got.